three Britons have been following the summer by motorbike. They're trying to make their way into the record books by covering as much of the world as they can in 300 days. School teachers Austin Vince and Clive Greenhall and journalist Charles Penty left London in May in search of adventure and a world record. In everybody's heart, deep down somewhere, there's that quest for adventure. And these guys have actually did it. Well, I've uh, found myself in a rut recently, but it's a, a joyous rut of long distance expedition motorcycling, round the world type stuff, which is sometimes called adventure motorcycling. Mono Enduro was a trip that we came up with in December 92 and we left in April 95 and rode 14 months around the world, did about 40,000 miles across 44 countries. None of us really had any idea what was going to happen. It was tremendously exciting to be doing this thing and every day was a new miracle, a new milestone, a new adventure. 2,640 metres up, obviously no one up here apart from a few bits of livestock. That classic feeling that you're the only person that's ever been here ever when it's just, uh, you know, doesn't get any better does it? And especially because the trip started almost immediately with Georgia, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, and then of course Russia and Siberia, which in 1995 were completely still as per the Soviet Union. That was a colossal cultural immersion. Well, I'll tell you something, you yeah, don't get any sunsets like this at home. You do in Bournemouth. At the Amherst University, I was, in, uh, I was at Sandhurst before university, then I was in the army at university, then I was at Sandhurst in the army after university before I became a teacher. Then all this, like, you know, quite high end confidence building, team leading, leadership type stuff. None of that stuff that I've just listed made as much impact on me compared to spending a year on the road travelling with my buddies. That's where I just blossom. Well, thank heavens for the uh, Trans-Siberian Railway. We're holed up here under this bridge sheltering from the rain. It's taken us two days to do the last 15 miles. We're absolutely exhausted. The last 15 miles have taken their toll on the bikes. We've got to change the tyres over on the bikes for ones uh, with better, better tread. There isn't any water here, we're just collecting in pots and pans the stuff that drips off the, off the railway bridge, then we uh, are just pulling it up and making brews out of it. We're starving, hungry. I haven't eaten properly, uh, you know, yesterday. There wasn't enough time for it and everything. When you come back from a, a six month or a year long round the world motorcycle trip, where you've been obviously living by your wits, by your initiative, when you come back from a long trip like that, you're worth a thousand times more to any employer than the day you left. So anybody who wants you to think that you're going to be disadvantaged is an idiot. The simple fact of the matter is that you've got the rest of your life to work. And that six months, you're going to just put it on the other end. I've always wanted to do it. I've been at work now 20 years. And it's time for a bit of a break and hopefully a bit of a career change when I come back. This is Gerald Vince, my older brother of nine years and uh, as far as I'm concerned, the founding father of Modo Enduro and therefore, by extension, the entire adventure motorcycle explosion that we see today. Well, that's not quite true, but never mind. <laughs> the thing about Modo Enduro was that once we left Istanbul, we had no idea what we were going to be doing. When you get up in the morning, you've only got to worry about three things. One, do we need petrol? Where are we going to get it? Two, we need some food. Where are we going to get it? Three, we need beer. Where are we going to get it? And that's all you have to worry about all day, every day, until something goes wrong. 
And that's when the fun starts. <laughs> It's a great shame to see uh, the way that it's not obvious to most people that motorcycling around the world is very cheap, safe and easy. The tragedy of, the, of what's happening in Civil Adventure Motorcycling at the moment is that um, all sorts of different people are now making money out of it and in doing so, because they're selling you something, any normal person, especially a youngster who's coming into it, will think, well, look, these companies wouldn't exist unless I needed this stuff. Then before you before you've left, you think you need five grand, you know, and that's plus 12 grand worth of motorcycle. And uh, none of that is true. You need a, a 500 pound bike, which is fine, obviously second hand, and you can leave it pretty much in the clothes you're standing up in. Some waterproof from your local angling stall. We're in Japan. I can't believe it. bag, simple tool roll. And you're, and you're ready to you're go around the world. You're spending the money on the trip, not on the gear to do the trip. Otherwise you'll never get anywhere. You'd, no, never, you'd, you'd never leave. All you've got to do is plan your route, save up the cash and go. For anybody that's thinking of doing a trip, the crucial thing is that you don't listen to anybody who hasn't done exactly what you want to do. on a motorcycle, go to Horizons Unlimited, which is the world's most respected long distance motorcycle website. But don't listen to those idiots back in England who just want to pour water on your dreams.